As gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast I really go for. He's enjoying his Quaker puffed wheat. Looks good, too. It is good. Right, and so is Quaker puffed rice. These king-size, ready-to-serve grains of wheat or rice are choice, flavor-rich premium grains. They're shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Shot through and through with swell, nut-like flavor, too. And wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Makes a nourishing, economical, deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. Tomorrow, sure, try this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston had just made a long northern patrol. On his way back to Dawson City, he stopped off at a trading post run by Andy McDermott. Okay. Hello, Hello there, sir. Hello, Andy. Everything all right here at the trading post? No, Sergeant. Everything's not all right. Not by a long shot. Oh? What's the matter? Uh, come on in and get warm, and I'll tell you all about it. All right. You come in too, King. You know there's always a place by the stove for you. Well, Andy, what's wrong? Well, sir, it happened just the night before last, Sergeant. I was robbed. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me what happened. Well, along about midnight, I heard someone pounding on the door. I got up out of bed and went to see who it was. Hold your horses. I'm coming. Yes. The masked man. Yes. I don't mind using this gun I'm holding. So you better do what I tell you to. Yes. Light the lamp. Yes, yes, of course. Don't shoot. That's better. Now show me where your safe is. What, what are you aiming to do, mister? What do you think? Just show me this safe and never mind the question. All right, all right. You don't need to poke me in the ribs with that gun. It's right over here. Open it. Now you looky here, I mister. I said open it. Yes, I, I guess I can't argue with that gun. That's right, you can't. Hurry up and open that safe. Yes, yes. Uh, She's open. Good. I don't need you anymore, McDermott. No. (laughs) I couldn't have been out for more than a few minutes after he slugged me. Because when I come to, he was still cleaning out the safe. Did he see you wake up? No, I didn't move or make any noise. I just lay there and watched with my eyes half open. The critter had taken off his mask. Did you got a look at his face? I sure did, Sergeant. And who do you suppose it was? I have no idea. It was Corporal Hayden of the Northwest Mounted Police. What? Andy, are you sure? You bet I'm sure. I've seen his face lots of times. But Hayden's one of the best men on the force, Andy. I just can't believe it. Eh? You sure it couldn't have been someone who looked like him? It was Hayden, all right, no mistake. I could identify him even if he hadn't taken off his mask. How so? Well, have you ever noticed that tattoo on the back of Hayden's left hand? Of course I have. A pair of cross pistols with the initials T.H. Yes, that's right. And that's exactly what I saw on this man's hand. Yeah. That's pretty convincing evidence. And it doesn't seem possible that a man like Tom Hayden would turn crooked. <laughs> Andy, have you reported this robbery to anyone but me? Well, there uh, wasn't no one I could report it to, except Hayden himself over in Snowshoe Pass. I couldn't leave the post long enough to go all the way to Dawson City. Can you leave it now for 24 hours? Well, I guess so. Why? I'd like to have you come with me to Snowshoe Pass and repeat your story before Corporal Hayden. 
Will you do it? You bet I will, Sergeant. The following morning, Sergeant Preston and Andy McDermott confronted Corporal Hayden in the cabin that served both as his office and living quarters in the town of Snowshoe Pass. It's a mighty serious charge Andy's bringing against you, Corporal. I realize that, Sergeant. And I can understand just how Andy must feel, but I swear I wasn't the man who robbed the safe. Can you offer any explanation of how a crook might resemble you so closely? (laughs) None at all. You haven't a twin brother by any chance? Oh, I haven't got any brothers or sisters either, let alone a twin. Have any other robberies occurred recently? Well, that's an interesting point, Sergeant. What do you mean? As a matter of fact, there's been a whole series of robberies in this district lately. Any line on who committed them? Yeah. Well, to tell the truth, they've got me completely stumped. Do you think there might be some connection between those jobs and the robbery at Andy's trading post? It's a possibility. Did any of those jobs occur right here in town? Yes. Mark Selmer's store was robbed about a month ago. Andy. Yes? Are you willing to leave this case in my hands for the time being? Of course I am, Sergeant. I know you'll do the right thing. Before we do anything about your accusation against Corporal Hayden, I'd like a chance to investigate these other robberies. I'm going to begin by having a talk with Mark Selmer. Mark Selmer's Emporium was the biggest store in the town of Snowshoe Pass. Its stock consisted of everything from tinned beef and miner's picks to mucklucks and parkers. On King. Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Mark. Where have you two been keeping yourselves lately? Been up north on patrol the last five weeks. Are you going to stop off in town a while? Just long enough to investigate the robberies that have been happening around here. I'm glad to hear it, Sergeant. Maybe now we'll get some action. I understand your place was robbed, Mark. That's right. It's one of the first jobs that was pulled. Were you in the store when it happened? Well, not down here I wasn't. He keep it when he broke into the place. And you didn't get a look at him? No, I didn't, Sergeant. But I've got a hunch who it was, just the same. Let's hear your hunch, Mark. About three or four months ago, a stranger showed up in the neighborhood. He was a queer sort of cuss. Kept to himself most of the time. He had a big, bushy, black beard. Folks used to call him the hermit. Didn't he go by any name? Well, if he had a name, he never let on what it was. And we set up housekeeping in an old deserted shack in the woods, over on the other side of the pass. Uh, Maybe you know the place I mean. Yes, I do. Now, he'd come into the store every couple of weeks to buy supplies, but he never had much to say for himself. About the only person he ever talked to was Corporal Hayden. Now, wait a minute. I think I know the man you're talking about. About 5, 10, or 11, black beard, or an old brown parker with a patch place in front. That's him, all right. I saw him one day going toward Corporal Hayden's cabin just as I was leaving. He sounds rather harmless. What makes you think he has anything to do with the case? Well, about four or five weeks ago, he disappeared. It was right after that that all these robberies started happening. Oh? That's interesting, but it may just be a coincidence. Uh, If you ask me, it's more than a coincidence. I think he just holed up in that shack long enough to get the lay of the land. And then once he sized up all the likely-looking places, he started out to rob every one of them. Did you pass along your suspicions to Corporal Hayden? I certainly did, Sergeant. But nothing ever came of it. Well, Mark, it's a pretty slim lead, but it's worth looking into. I can promise you the matter will be thoroughly investigated. Sergeant Preston returned to Corporal Hayden's cabin, determined to find out more about the mysterious bearded man. But the corporal belittled Mark Selmer's suggestion. So Mark is still harping on that bearded hermit theory. I take it you don't think much of the idea. Frankly, I don't. Just because a man keeps to himself is no sign he's a crook. Well, that's true, but it is rather odd that he should disappear just before these robberies began. The hermit was a drifter, Sergeant. Probably just got the urge to move on. Did you make any attempt to investigate his disappearance? Well, I looked over the shack he stayed in. Anything to indicate where he went? No, not a thing, Sergeant. Just a few empty cans and trash of that sort. Hmm. Well, Corporal, the hermit may have nothing to do with this case, as you say, but I think I'll have a look at that shack myself. Snowshoe Pass, from which the town had taken its name, was a deep cleft in the rugged mountain range at whose foot the town nestled. The trail through the pass consisted of a narrow ledge which wound round one side of the gorge. It was along this trail that the sergeant headed his team a short time later as he set out to investigate the hermit's shack. King was acting as loose lead, breaking trail for the team, while Sergeant Preston followed behind the sled on snowshoes. About halfway through the pass, one of the sergeant's snowshoes came loose. As he paused to adjust the strap, he shouted to King. Go on, King! King and the other dogs went on with a sled, far ahead of Sergeant Preston, who paused to fasten a loose strap. The Mountie didn't notice a huge bank of snow which came sliding down the slope toward him. 
King, who was now some distance ahead of the sergeant, sensed what was happening. He turned and barked a frantic warning to his master. Hearing the bark, Sergeant Preston looked up and saw the avalanche. Slow slide! But it was too late. The onrushing mass of snow plunged down on the sergeant and swept him over the side into the gorge below. Oh! We'll continue our story in just a moment. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. Hey, what's a cow doing in here? Oh, now look, bossy. Mm, as you were about to say, the cow jumped over the moon. Huh? Oh, look, cow, did, did you say something? Sure. You're a talking cow? What's wrong with that? You talk, don't you? Well, sure, but... Well, uh... so do I. Gosh, what manner of cow are you? Me? I'm the cow that jumped over the moon. Say, I always did want to know something. What'd you do it for? To see what it looks like. You know, find out about that green and stuff. How did you make out? Not so good. I figure business is better down here. The milk business. Oh, well, gee, my business is talking about breakfast. Boy, the swellest breakfast ever. Of course, being a cow, you wouldn't know about that. I wouldn't, huh? Say... Look, you take a bowl... Fill it up with Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. In case you don't know it, Quaker puffed wheat and rice are the ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Mm, everyone knows that. Then you pour on some... Milk or cream. Gee, you're a right smart cow. Suppose you know that these king-sized grains are exploded up to eight times normal size. Sure, that's to make them crisp and tender. Did you know they furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron? Bet your life, they're good for you. Say, like I said, you're one smart cow. Maybe we ought to go into business together. Milk and cereal business, huh? That, sir, is precisely why I'm here. Now you're really talking. And say, fellas and girls, it isn't every day you meet up with a talking cow, but you can meet up with a swellest tasting breakfast tomorrow or any day. That breakfast is wheat or rice shot from guns, delicious with milk or cream and fruit. Ask Mom to buy both swell kinds. You'll love to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. On his way through Snowshoe Pass, Sergeant Preston was swept off the trail by a sudden snowslide. Luckily, as the Mountie plunged downward, he caught hold of a small projecting shelf of rock about 50 feet below the trail. He struggled up onto the shelf and then shouted up to King. sprang to obey his master's command. Pushing past the excited team, King retraced his steps through the pass. A short time later, he arrived at Corporal Hayden's camp. The great dog barked several times, but sensed that no one was inside. Finally, he pushed open the door and went in. The cabin was empty. As King stood for a moment, uncertain of his next move, he heard a dog team pull up outside. Even before he saw the driver, King knew that it was Corporal Hayden. The great dog rushed to the door, barking joyfully. Soon, help would be on its way to his master. But King had not counted on Corporal Hayden's strange reaction. At sight of the husky, Hayden's face twisted into an evil grin. Oh, Preston sent you for help, did he? <laughs> well, isn't that just dandy? Puzzled by the corporal's attitude... King back stiff-legged into the cabin, the hairs bristling along his back. Hayden followed, shutting the door behind him. A pile of wood stood by the stove. Suddenly, the corporal snatched up a heavy piece of wood and came at King. And the head will take care of you. Trained since puppyhood as a dog of the Northwest Mounted Police, King hesitated instinctively to attack the Mountie who now menaced him. The delay proved fatal. As the great dog backed away growling, the corporal sprang forward suddenly and brought the club crashing down on King's head. Here, this will fix you. More 
more than half an hour went by before King opened his eyes. His head hurt, and he felt something tight and constricting around his neck. Suddenly, he remembered that his master was in peril. The great dog sprang up, only to feel a noose pulled tight around his neck. Rearing up on his hind legs, King saw that the other end of the rope was tied to a rafter high overhead. The discovery drove him frantic. Again and again, the husky whirled and leaped, each time seeking to snap the rope with his fangs. But it was no use. The great dog was growing desperate. And then he noticed a chair standing nearby. Straining forward as far as the rope would allow, King seized the rung of the chair in his powerful jaws. He tugged the chair slowly toward him until it stood under the rafter to which the rope was tied. Springing up on the chair, King found that the rope now hung partially slack. He gnawed at the rope frantically, and soon the last strand parted. The great dog was free. A short time later, two sourdoughs named Joe Lucas and Bill Jordan heard a noise outside the door of their cabin. Hey, Bill, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, Joe, and I do. Sounds like that dog is right outside the door. I'll go see. Well, I'll be horn squabble. He sure wanted in all right. Hey, he's got some rope tied around his neck. Yeah. Hey, and take a look at that blood on his head. Looks like someone lighted him a good whack. You know that there's something familiar about that dog. Doggone, or is it that? He sure is a handsome critter. I've got it. Why, that's King, Sergeant Preston's dog. Oh, you're right. He heard you say his name. What you talking about my clothes for? Looks like he wants you to go somewhere with him. That's funny. Do you suppose his master could be in trouble? Could be. He's a plenty smart dog. Well, maybe i better follow him just in case. I'll go get my parka. Uh, you want me to go along, too? No, you stay here. I'm going to hitch up the sled in case anyone's been hurt. Two of us have just slow things down. Come on, King. Let's go. King led the sourdough out of town and along the trail through Snowshoe Pass to the point where Sergeant Preston had gone over the edge. Hold, hold, hold. King must be Preston's. He must have had some kind of an accident. I'm down here. Look over the side. What? Holy mackerel, it's a sergeant. What happened, sergeant? I got caught in a snow slide. Put me off the trail, but I managed to grab hold of this ledge. I didn't bring any rope. Have you got any? I think there's enough on my sled to reach down here. If not, you'll have to unharness the dogs and use the traces. In a few moments, Joe Lucas was letting down a line to the stranded mountain. Can you reach it? Just barely. You let it down any farther? Well, not much farther, sergeant. i got to keep a good hold on it. Wait till I twist it around one hand. What's the rope secured to up there? I got it tied to a pine a little ways up the slope. You all set? I'm ready. All the way. Yeah. Uh, Bracing his feet against a rocky outcropping on the trail, uh, Joe hauled away steadily on the line. A few moments later, Sergeant Preston rose up within sight of the trail, when suddenly... Hey, hey, someone's shooting at us. That's me, you mean. Don't let go, Joe. Uh, I won't. Watch down. He can't hit you as long as that bolt is in the way. <laughs> what about you? I'm not much of a target. You should have waited till my head was a little higher. Whoa, that was close. Hey, Sergeant, what are you doing? You can't hang on long with one hand. I'm going to try a shot. I think I hit him. All right, hold away fast. Yeah. A moment later, Sergeant Preston struggled up over the edge of the precipice and dropped flat on the trail. Duncan, keep down, fella. He ain't firing no more. Maybe you killed the critter. I don't think so. I just winged him. The two men lay quietly for several minutes. Finally, Sergeant Preston got to his feet cautiously. <sighs> what do you reckon he's up to now? I think he's gone, Joe. He probably lost interest in the proceedings when he stopped that bullet. Where was he firing from? Up the mountains. Behind that screen of pines there. Is there another trail up there? By golly, there is. I'd forgotten all about it. You see, no one ever uses that trail, because it's worse than this one. Well, apparently someone uses it. It wasn't any eagle that was shooting at us. <laughs> Don't worry, fella, I haven't forgotten you. Joe, what happened to King's head? Search me, Sergeant. My guess is someone clouded him good and hard. How did you and King meet? He came to our cabin and whined at the door. His head was all bloody. But my partner washed it off while I was getting ready to follow him here. And there was a piece of rope around his neck, too, but Bill cut it off. Well, that's odd. I sent King to... Joe, I know who that was who fired those shots. Who was it, Sergeant? Corporal Hayden of the Northwest Mounted Police. Corporal Hayden? 
Uh, Sergeant, are you... That's the only possible answer. I sent King to Hayden's cabin for help. Hayden must have clubbed King and then tied him up. You mean he did all that and then hightailed it out here to put a bullet in you? I rather think he was hoping I'd die down there on that ledge. That way it would all look like an accident. Well, it it was an accident, wasn't it? You said you got swept over by a snow slide. I'm beginning to think that snow slide didn't just happen. You mean Hayden started the slide? It would have been easy enough for a man up on that high trail there. Yeah, it would at that. What are you going to do now, Sergeant? I'm going after Corporal Hayden. He's probably halfway back to town by now. I don't think so, Joe. Well, then I think I'll find him at the hermit shack on the other side of the pass. What in tarnation would he be doing there? I knew I was headed for the shack when I left his cabin. That's why he caused the snow slide to keep me from getting there. Now, that don't make sense, Sergeant. If you left Hayden at his cabin, he wouldn't have had time to get up there and cause that snow slide. To do that, he'd need a head start. He got that head start by sending me to see Doc Barry before I started through the pass. I savvy. But why should he be so anxious to keep you from visiting that shack? There's probably evidence of some kind there that'll link him to these robberies. Well, Joe, I don't think I'd better waste any more time talking here. Before I go, I want to thank now, you for... slow down, Sergeant. We aren't part in company just yet. I'm going along and see the fun. Suit yourself, Joe, but I warn you, the fun may be dangerous. Half an hour later, Sergeant Preston and Joe Lucas halted their teams a short distance from the hermit shack. Looking. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, no. The shack's not much farther on, Sergeant. What's our next move going to be? We'll leave our sleds here and go the rest of the way on foot. As the two men approached the shack, King whined softly. What's the matter with King? He probably picked up Hayden's scent. Maybe we'd better keep behind those trees and bushes up ahead. No one can see us from this angle. Shack has no window on this side. Hey, King's right. Someone is in that shack. Yes, Joe. Line of prints leading up to the door and none going away. He probably parked his sled somewhere out of sight, just like we did. What are you going to do, Sergeant? I'm going to move in closer around the corner of the shack so I can get a look in the window. You better be mighty careful. Don't worry. I've got my gun ready and I'll have King with me. (laughs) Closing in cautiously, Sergeant Preston peered through the window. Then he returned to Joe Lucas. Is he in there, Sergeant? Hayden's nowhere in sight. But there's a bearded man lying on the floor, tied and gagged. A bearded man? That must be the hermit. That's who it looks like. There's something mighty fishy about all this. That critter didn't tie himself up, did he? I don't see how he could have. Then who made those tracks up to the door? There's only one way to find out, Joe. And that is go in and see. With Sergeant Preston in the lead, the two men approached the shack. As the sergeant opened the door, King gave a low growl. Hey, that is the hermit sergeant. Keep your gun handy, Joe. Going over and on time. The bearded man jerked his head frantically as Sergeant Preston bent to untie him. Looks like he's trying to tell you something, Sergeant. Yes. Both Joe Lucas and Sergeant Preston were watching the man on the floor. Easy now. I'll have you free in a minute. Only King saw the trap door suddenly lift in the far corner of the room. But his warning came too late. Drop that gun, Lucas. What? Hey, what? I said drop that gun. What? Yeah, I've dropped it. All right. Now you can both turn around. Well, it's Hayden. You sound as though you might have been expecting me. The sergeant guessed you'd be here. We just didn't know you'd be hiding under that trap door. Apparently, that's what the man on the floor was trying to tell us. Too bad you didn't catch on, sergeant. Why so? Because as soon as I climb up out of here, I'm going to kill the both of you. I wouldn't be too sure of that if I were you, Hayden. <laughs> You're a mighty cool customer, Preston. But it's not going to do you a bit of good. Hey, that dog. Got my arm. Man alive, that was fast shooting, Sergeant. I had to shoot fast. He'd have killed King. Kick your gun to one side, Hayden. I should have shot that confounded dog back at the camp. (laughs) You sure look surprised when you saw him coming at you, Corporal. He's no Corporal, Joe. What do you mean? Unless I'm mistaken, the real Corporal Hayden's lying there on the floor. What? Pick up your gun and keep that crook covered while I untie this man. We'll let him tell the story. A short time later, the mysterious bearded man was able to speak. You're right, Sergeant. I am Corporal Hayden. I imagine Joe will be able to recognize you as soon as you've shaved off that beard. But if the hermit is the corporal, then who in thunder is this crook I'm holding a gun on? I imagine we'll find that he's Corporal Hayden's twin brother. You've guessed it, Sergeant. Up till a month ago, he was wearing a beard. 
Mine grew while he was holding me prisoner here. You'd better start at the beginning, Gorbel. My brother is a fugitive from justice down in the States. He showed up here a few months ago, asked me to help him. No one recognized him as my twin because of his beard. And you didn't turn him in. I'm ashamed to say I didn't. How did he manage to change places with you? I, I came out here one day to tell him he'd have to clear out of the territory. When I got here, he pulled a gun on me, forced me to change clothes with him. Then he locked me down in the cellar. He's been keeping me there ever since. Are you aware that he's been pulling a series of robberies? Yes, I am. You'll find all of the loot down in the cellar. I'm curious about that tattoo on his left hand, just like yours. In fact, that's what originally misled me. You see, Sergeant, my brother and I served a hitch in the Royal Navy before I joined the mounted police. We both got tattooed the same way. My name's Tom Hayden, and his is Tim Hayden. So we both had the same initials put on. T.H. Well, I'll be hornswoggled. No wonder he was able to fool everybody. It was a mighty puzzling business, all right. And mighty dangerous, too, wasn't it, King? <laughs> Luckily, you were around when I needed you, fella. Now, line up the dogs, and let's get home to headquarters. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Extra, extra! Try this extra special breakfast treat of the week! Yes, serve ready-to-serve Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice together in a cereal dish. Separate the two with fresh fruit and add milk or cream. It's different. It hits the spot. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. It comes only in the famous big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Always look for him. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the frightened child. When King and I found a little girl crying in the woods outside of Dawson... We thought it was simply a matter of returning a lost child to her parents. We didn't realize that in order to do that, we'd have to fight it out with three of the worst crooks in the Yukon. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Attention, dog owners. Here's a real bargain. The famous kennel bar dog feeding bowl... Now only one dollar plus four kennel ration labels. Compares with bowls worth up to three dollars and fifty cents. It's fifteen inches long, made of heavy gauge plastic. It won't tip over and it's easy to clean. Serves water and food separately. Get yours today. Your dealer has the mailing coupon. Or send your dollar and four kennel ration labels to Kennel Ration, Chicago, 77. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.